there you are, Betty. Oh, hello, Mrs. Norton. What on earth are you doing in this dark room by yourself? I, I... Mrs. Morton, may I speak with you a moment? Of course, dear. But why aren't you with the others in the laboratory? That place frightens me. Oh, it's not that bad. Although I admit it's a bit gloomy. And that horrible mechanical man. I can't stand to look at it any longer. You're overwrought, Betty, dear. There's nothing horrible about a mechanical man. Frank has been working on it for two years now. And Jim has been helping us for a year. I know, Mrs. Norton. And I don't approve of things going any further than this But why, dear? Well, I know it's silly of you to see it as well. Not everything is so clear about it. Haven't you ever thought that something was going to happen to you? Something you know is going to be And yet you can't explain what that something is. Now, my family's still around. I don't know. But somehow I have a feeling I'll never marry you. I can't like you. Well, this time I've known you. Mr. Westgate said that tomorrow? Yes, sir. Oh, Mrs. Morton, you don't suppose anything will happen to Jane, do you? I mean, could anything possibly go wrong with the experiment tonight? Of course not, dear. I don't know. I just can't stand to have a mechanical man look. I have a feeling of having to fly. What's the story? It's just a girl that knows the school. That should be just about it. Gee, Pop, will you work now? <laughs> I hope so, son. Uncle Frank, are you going to make him walk? Yes, in a few moments, Janet. Oh, I'm so excited. Good. Will he be able to talk to Uncle Frank? Of course not, silly Uncle Frank. Told you that 20 times yesterday. No, Mary's right, Janet. You see, this is just a mechanical man. He won't be able to talk. That's about the only thing he won't be able to do, though, Janet. You're right, John. The doctor's mechanical man will be able to do about everything a human being can do, except talk. How do you feel now that your work is about completed, Frank? Wonderful, Jane. And I want to thank all of you for standing by me. You've all been a great help. And without you, <laughs> I don't know what I'd have done. Well, it isn't every day that one has a distinguished brother who invents a mechanical man. And I certainly appreciate the opportunity you've given me, Dr. Morton, by allowing me to assist you in the experiment. That goes for me, too, Dr. Morton. Well, I've learned more in the past month than any of my college class have taught me. You're all very kind, but our work isn't finished yet. We still have a few more things to do, and then we'll all know whether our time has been wasted or not. I'm afraid Betty doesn't share our enthusiasm for the mechanical man, Doctor. Yeah, and she was crying when she left. How do you know? I saw her and she had a handkerchief up to her eyes. Crying? Now, what on earth for? The girls are right, Dr. Morton. My sister seems to feel there's something wrong in what we're doing. But that's foolish. There's nothing to be afraid of. I know, Dr. Morton. But Betty is a very sensitive girl. She feels that we're exceeding our limits. I'm sure she'll feel differently when she sees the results. Perhaps I'd better go to her. No, James. I know my sister pretty well. It'd be better to leave her alone for the time being. When I can time out, Pop? Patience, son. Patience. Now, so hand me that iron, John. This one? Right. Mm -hmm. Won't be long now. When do you think you can try it out, Frank? Uh, just as soon as Mrs. Morton returns. Uh, by the way, James, where's Betty? She went upstairs a few minutes ago, Dr. Morton. Said she had a headache. Gosh, she's going to miss all the excitement. Well, when we're ready, you can go get her, Barry. You bet I will, Pop. Oh, hi, Mom. Hello, Barry. Have you seen Betty, Mrs. Morton? Yes, I just left her. She said she'd be up in a minute. 
They were just telling us Betty disapproves of our experiment. Well, I think the storm has her on edge. She was much calmer when I left. Is there anything I can do? No, James. It's just a case of nerves, I think. Anyhow, let's give her a few more minutes alone. Well, if you think we should. We're just about finished, Madge. Won't it be wonderful to see a mechanical man move around, Mary? I suppose you'll let him help you do the dishes. I think your uncle would like that better than I would, Janet. Sometimes think that's why you invented a mechanical man. Oh, now, Madge. Well, you do hate doing little odd jobs, Frank. Well, if Frank's experiment is successful here tonight, none of us will have to worry about any odd jobs again. <laughs> I can't say that I'd mind having a mechanical man in my business. A mechanical man will be more than that. More than just a hired hand. Can't you see what this will mean to the world? He'll relieve men from dangerous jobs in all lines of hazardous work. There'll be no more deaths from cave-ins and mines. No losses from construction men falling to their deaths from skyscrapers. He'll take his place in these and many other positions where men lose their lives daily. Why, carefully directed, he'll be the greatest insurance to world peace that has yet been thought of. No. I hadn't invented this man to abuse as a handyman around the house. Of course, I didn't mean that. No, Madge. The mechanical man will be the answer to our future national security. I'll build thousands of them. Can you see an aggressive country attacking any country which has an army of steel men who can't be killed? But, Dr. Morton, I thought you were interested in this purely from the scientific point of view. And I am. But if I can give the world more, I'll not stop there. Now, Frank, don't get excited. Believe me, my friends, I am not unduly excited. But the prospect of what we are about to create here is tremendous. I, I can't help being carried away. Why don't you time out, Pop? You're right, Barry. I won't let myself get carried away until we see if we really do have a mechanical man who can do all these things. You mean you're going to do it now? Yes, now. Could I help you, Uncle Frank? What could you do? Well, Uncle Frank said we were all going to help him. Didn't you, Uncle Frank? Well, yes, I did, Janet. But I'm afraid there's nothing you girls could do right now except give us your moral support. Is there anything I can do, sir? Yes, James. Would you connect that line for me? The one over there on the other side of the bench. Right. And, John, if you hold this left arm in place, we'll make that final adjustment we were about to make before Mrs. Morton come in. Higher. Uh, certainly, sir. Can I help too, Pop? No, I'm afraid not, son. You stand over there with Mary and Janet. There'll be plenty you can all do later on. Oh, gee, I don't ever get to do nothing. You come over here by me, dear, and stay out of your father's way. Oh, gee. I think we've got it. That should do it, Dr. Morton. Well, I guess that just about gets it, sir. Good, good. Now we'll see if all our work has been in vain. Here, give me a hand. Oh, Betty, we didn't see you come in, my dear. Darling, you, you look so pale. I'm all right, Jim. I've been worried about you, but Mrs. Morton said to leave you alone for a few minutes. Yes, I'm afraid I've been behaving rather badly. Everything seems to be getting on my nerves now. Well, everything will be all right now, Betty. I'm glad you're here. We're just about to prove our experiment. Dad can make them walk, Betty. That's fine, Barry. I'll be with you in a moment, dear. Please go on. Don't let me interrupt your work. Come over here by me, dear. All right. Now, James, if you pull the switch up there. Right. <laughs> hey, James, the switch. What is it, Betty? Tell us. It moved. It moved. Yes, I know. I was just about to set the man up and start him walking. But did you see that expression in his face? No. No, I don't know what you're talking about. There's no expression in his face, Betty. He's just a mechanical man. But he looked at me. I swear he was staring at me. There, there. Now, dear, you were all upset again. Come with me. Oh, I'm sorry, but I... I... Better take her upstairs, Madge. Give her a sedative. I will, Frank. Come with me, dear. All right. Shall I come along? No, no, James. I think it's better if we go alone. Dr. Morton, do you think that... No, she'll be all right, James. Now, let's get back to where we were. Hey, Poppy, move! I believe it's working, Dr. Morton. Oh, Frank, he does move. He does. Larry, let go of my arm. You're pinching me. Isn't it wonderful? He moves. He really moves. Now we'll see how he reacts to my direction. Oh, Frank, he almost seems human. Yes, this exceeds my wildest hopes. He's strong, too. Just feel the resistance in his arm. I can see what Betty meant now. I could swear I saw him sneer just then. That's nonsense. 
This is a man of steel, John. He has no mind, no willpower of his own. You're all overwrought. As you know, he's controlled by voice impulses. Take one step forward. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now walk forward. Return to the bench. I said return to the bench. Stop him, James. Back. Back to the bench. Oh, so that's the way you want it. How is he? Just seems to have had the wind knocked out of him. What was that? It sounded like Betty. You take care of James. I'll go see. Morton. He came into the room where Betty was resting. Go on. And he scooped her up in his arms and he carried her up. I came running down here as fast as I could. Come on, John. We've got to stop that thing. Yes, sir. Oh, what have we done? 